are you not afraid of being also bullied by the, the church authority because of your your initiative, your uh, advocacy in reviving the spirituality in Christianity? Um, <laughs> no, I'm not afraid of them. I really am not afraid of them. And, um, you know, it is not that they are not attempting to do so. Of course they do. But um, it does not stop me. Um, the reason why is, see, church is losing a lot of people, you know, who in my findings are very, very thoughtful people. They are leaving the church. See, believers don't leave the church. It's the people who think they leave the church. See, their thoughtfulness must be recognized, respected, taken into account, and, you know, they need to know that there is a way that they can have a life in Christ, even away from the church. You see, um, see, the, the people who are leaving, they are not, they are not just Catholics alone. Many people think that it is Catholics. Not so. In every denomination, people are leaving. You know, by thousands every day. See, it has already reached over a billion around the world. Over a billion. Okay, so, and this is what Jesus was describing as my lost sheep. We are supposed to drop everything and go after that one sheep who has gone astray. Yet we have over a billion that have gone astray. Is the church doing anything about it? They are holding on to their belief system that has been working for 2,000 years. And they believe that that will continue to work so that the institution can be survived. Am I going to fall for it? Not at all. You know, does that mean I'm unfaithful to the church? Not really. See, if I go beyond the teachings of the church, that doesn't make me unfaithful. You see, I am, a, you know, strong, 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 strong believer, you know, in our saints, in... Jesus in the Holy Spirit and the Father in heaven and uh, in the Bible and in everything, you know, because it gives me the foundation, it gives me the basis of my thought process. The only difference is my thought process processes have taken me beyond my rigid belief system. That does not make me a lesser Christian or a lesser Catholic. That makes me a very strong Catholic, a very strong Christian. Okay. What about the 
this is all about the the Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist is exclusive for the, the Catholics and uh, some of the Christian denominations do not have this uh, receiving of the Holy Eucharist. So do you think they they will not also be part of this people that can be saved? See, it's a good question and thank you for asking me that. You see, the celebration of receiving the Eucharist, it seems to revolve around, you know, the host, the material element of the host. You know, so it has really become uh, a sacrament of of making the host, you know, sacramentally transformed and uh, giving it to people as the body of Christ. Now, the problem with that is it is missing the conscious awareness, okay, that evolves around this sacrament. You know, we are only looking at it in a sort of a material perspective. There is a host and the host is being, you know, sanctified. And that's sanctified by the mysteries and, you know, by, uh, you know, by, by the promises and the sacramental powers of the, uh, of the church is being transformed as Jesus. And now that that thing, that host, has uh, become the body of Christ and we are going to consume the body of Christ that is going to sanctify our material beings. So everything is sort of materially connected. So it is really more of a sort of an intellectual belief system, you know, than a system that takes us beyond uh, you know, the mysteries of all of these uh, to realize the, 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 the nature of truth in all of these. So what, you know, I am, um, you know, what I am being in the position is, is, is not that Eucharist is wrong or Eucharistic celebration is wrong, not at all. But we as beings who are called, you know, to participate in the consciousness of Jesus must become consciously aware of the presence of Jesus. Okay, if this is going to give us that symbolic facilitation to enter into the consciousness of the divine being of Christ, so be it. But we need to go beyond the symbolism and the material representations of the sacrament itself. You know, that is really what I believe in. I go to church. I receive the sacrament. You know, for me, receiving the sacrament it's, it's an incredible experience. You see, you know, because for me, it is more than a conscious awareness. It is literally an encounter with Jesus. The same encounter St. Paul had. The same encounter all the apostles had. What did Jesus say? You know, there were prophets, there were saints, you know, could not hear what you are hearing. 
they could not see what you are seeing. They could not. They could not, but you are. That is the real encounter. See, the prophets did not encounter Jesus. The saints of the Old Testament did not encounter Jesus as his apostles did, as Mother Mary did, as Mary of Magdalene did, did. even St. Paul after the death of Christ did. Jesus is not denying us. He is already abiding in us. He is not denying us, you know, his encounter. He says, I'm crafted. You are crafted onto me. I abide in you. I am you. Because when you are crafted onto me, you and I are one and the same. We are the same tree. Except you are crafted as a branch onto me, yet your roots and your sustenance and your whole survival is rooted in me. Is Jesus denying his encounter to us? Not at all. See, but we are looking for symbolic, you know, uh, uh, encounters. No, there is a real encounter awaits us. The same encounter St. Paul had. Same encounter, all the apostles, all the disciples, Mother Mary, Mary of Magdalene, St. Joseph, all of them had. The same encounter even the Simeon of Cyrene had. Same encounter even the Pontius Pilate had. Except they took Jesus at face value, as symbolic value. They did not go beyond but they have in front of them. Jesus did not, you know, deny himself to this uh, uh, public uh, sinners, those who are, those who were accused of uh, committing sin publicly, like uh, Magdalene, um, tax collector, um, what can you say about the priest who denied people <laughs> receiving communion? Okay, thank you, thank you. I mean, that's again another another great question of a believer. Okay, um, yeah, you know, I mean, our church is very focused on sins. About a third of the catechism of the Catholic Church you know, is about the definitions about sins and what sin can do to us. Oh. But the same catechism also teaches us that an encounter with Jesus will change everything for us. You see, because an encounter with Jesus gives us the grace not to sin. You know, the adulterous woman received the grace. The difference is the Samaritan woman, even though Jesus went and met her personally, did not receive the grace. She took him as a symbolic representation, an incredible soothsayer who told me everything about myself. That is the extent of what she witnessed in Jesus. See, but the adulterous woman who stood in the presence of Jesus had an encounter, had an experience of the powers of Jesus. And that experience transformed her. 
so the encounter of jesus made a huge difference in her life and then she became a transformed woman without the grace to sin you know sherry the answer to your question is when you encounter jesus within you and when you have the real experience of transformation you will not be able to sin no more everything is wiped out that was number 1 and even your tendencies to sin becomes non existent so what is relevant here is not our fear of sinfulness or our vulnerability to sins you know it's it's not what matters here is a real encounter with jesus when you have a real encounter with jesus nothing remains the same from then on see even the sinful nature of you jesus will find a way to use it in his ministry see saint paul for instance you know he was a great theologian you know uh, even before he became a disciple of jesus was jesus able to use his theological knowledge yes he did see your sinfulness you know the 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 the, the, the sins that you commit you become so understanding about it so tolerant about it so compassionate about it you know so when you read the last letter of saint paul which is the letter to uh what is it philemon you know and here you see the way uh saint paul is pleading for the mercy of the runaway slave you know to the slave master pleading for his mercy he is putting his own neck on the line and asking him to pardon him and take him back you know he is telling him he is a reformed person he is not going to be unfaithful to you i give you my word i put my neck on the line for you see and here is a man who actually murdered people you know who were running away from judaism and see how he was transformed towards the end see that is what happens in a true encounter real encounter with jesus even your sinful natures you know turns transformed as compassion understanding mercifulness towards other human beings towards other people see when you go after a lost sheep you know that lost sheep has committed sins but you are merciful you are so compassionate you are not going to judge them you are going to you know pick them up put them on your shoulders and you are going to walk along with jesus and jesus is going to take care of the rest say that is really what happens to sin and sinfulness so my answer is if you are pursuing you know spiritual wisdom don't worry about it don't even think about your sins don't even think about your guilt because one encounter with jesus will change everything will transform everything you know and the catechism 
catechism of the Catholic Church. It tells us that, except there is not much clarity about it. You know, the same clarity about sins is not here. Uh, you know, when it tells us that one encounter with Jesus will change everything, you know, that remains kind of mystical. But there is incredible truth to it. Incredible truth to it. Okay. <laughs> So you're saying that uh, you need, of course, before you will develop this spiritual enhancement, you need, of course, to study the catechism of the Catholic Church and nourish yourself with, uh, of course, this. See, knowledge, knowledge is important. You know, knowledge about the Bible is important. Do you want to have knowledge about the church? Yeah, read. You know, read uh, the magisteriums and the, and the catechisms and all of that. Read, 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 read. There is no matter how, you know, what amount of reading you can do about Jesus, nothing is enough. Nothing is enough. There is infinite number of knowledge out there in the unwritten words about Jesus himself. So if there is anything written about him, start there. Nothing wrong. Okay, but only thing is, you know, just know one thing. Be in the awareness that there is more to this than what is being spelled out here. You know, that is not all that is going to make you believe. There is truth beyond it. And that, that truth is going to set you free. And the Holy Spirit is going to take you there. So, whatever you read, even the Gospels, you know, whatever you read, read it along with the Holy Spirit. Always be in the awareness that He is the one who is going to teach us the truth. He is the one who is going to lead us into the mysteries. He is the one who is going to lead me into the wisdom. He is the one who is going to give me that freedom so that I can be standing completely as a naked child in front of Jesus. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And, and, and that is really what it is all about. What it is all about. It is him, not the teachings themselves, not the catechisms themselves, not the magisteriums themselves, in fact, not the Gospels itself. Okay, because it is the Holy Spirit who teaches us everything. That's what the word says. All right. Thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. And now I am actually beginning to uh, to answer some of my questions because of your sharing. But I am still praying that God will give me this mind of a child so that I oh, praise be God. Able to ask more questions and will not stop from seeking the truth and praying that God will enlighten my spiritual consciousness. And thank you so much for your for your help for this enlightenment. This is really oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. God. And I believe that you are really uh, uh, the one that God has sent me tonight as my mentor to give me this uh, wonderful realization of my mission. As of now, I am so, there are a lot more questions in my mind, but since it's already getting late, so probably okay. we can have more more uh, about this. Yes, yes, of course, of course. We will continue to talk, and I appreciate you asking me questions, you know, because, you know, uh, truthfully, um, Sherry, it is not answers that lead us to spiritual realization. 
it is questions that lead us to spiritual realization you know so keep asking questions keep asking questions to me and keep asking questions to the holy spirit never stop asking questions you know as a child the does does the child ever stops asking you why you know no matter how irritated you get a child wouldn't stop asking you why see that is the mindset we need to have you know it is the questions that would lead us to the wisdom it is not the answers we get